praise the wonderful name of Amen. Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes. Worthy is the Lamb. Is that enough light for you? Yes, I think that's going to be fine. Okay. It's going to be fine. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We are so glad to be here. Yes. We're blessed the Lord have kept us this long. <laughs> Amen. Because Psalms have passed on since the last time yeah. we were here. But the Lord has seen fit to keep us a little bit longer. Amen. Amen. And we want to do the, the will of God. Uh, we want to accomplish his plan and his purpose for the time that we're here. Amen. 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 And when we're when it's about time for us to go, we want to be able to say, Thank the Lord, I have run my race. Amen. I have kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Yes. Amen. Don't, don't you know that one day we're leaving? Amen. I, I know we don't like to think about it, but let's just be honest. One day we are leaving, but we're not gone yet. So let's praise him while we're here. Amen. Amen. So we give God praise. Amen. We're so glad to be here with our Father's Heart Ministry. Amen. With Pastor Norma, Reverend Neil, we are so blessed that you would uh, ask us and invite us again to come back and share with you. Amen. I'm just looking around and we've got enough shouting room here. Amen. And I'm sorry, I get excited sometimes. I Sometimes I get beside myself. And that's just because when Jesus shows up, now, I'm not so sure about some people, but I, I can speak for me. When Jesus shows up, now we, all, we know that he's living in us and the Lord is with us. But there are some times that he shows up a little bit more than other times. And it's not him, it's us who drew a little bit closer to him. And as we get closer to the Lord, things begin to happen to us. You know, our hands fly up in the air when we didn't mean to do that. We begin to shout the victory shout when we really didn't plan it. That's the best kind of shout. The one you didn't plan. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God. Um, we have about two weeks of sermons, so we're going to go ahead and get started. <laughs> amen, amen. Don't worry, I say that every time. Amen. I say it every time. But, you know, the Lord will cut us off somewhere. And if he don't, pass a normal will. So, so don't worry. We, we, we've got a time limit. <laughs> amen. We are so thankful to the Lord, and, and, and as Pastor Norm was reading, and she meant she meant, she mentioned, uh, you know, when the, the bishop says he's a courtyard minister. Um, yes, um, I have an I have had opportunities to minister um, impromptu to many on my job. Amen. Um, as you know, that could be you have to be careful how you minister on your job. It's not that's not a church. That's a job. But there are people that come to the job hurting. Uh -huh. People yes. that come to the job in pain. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we're having conversations about the job, mm -hmm. other things come up because people know that Jesus is in me yeah. as I'm walking. Yeah. Thank you. And sometimes, you know, people know where to go when they need help. Yeah. And sometimes the questions will come up, you know, and things will be said. And my God, when the door is open, saints of God, let us walk right in. Because Jesus doesn't wait till Sunday morning to show up. Doesn't wait till Saturday evening to show up. He might not wait till Wednesday. He might just show up while you're on your job. Amen. So you may have to say, excuse me, I need to run to the restroom for a quick moment. Because I can't work while this anointing is moving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I told you we got a little shouting room up here. Yeah, you know, if I get beside myself, just don't worry. I'm coming back. I'll be back. Because I believe that we should go to glory when we are in service. That's what I believe. Uh, I, I wish I was preaching on that tonight, but you know, you never know what God's going to do. Because we go to glory when we go to church. Because we only worship in spirit. 
and in truth. When we come to the building, we're not in church. Not with the Lord. We're in the building. God does not dwell in buildings made with hands. And so we come into the building and we seek the presence of the Lord. Because the Lord... The Lord wasn't in the building until you showed up. We brought him with us. And when we leave, he's going with us. Oh my goodness. You know, you never know what God is going to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to read something because I want to talk a little bit tonight. Um, and I want to go ahead and read something in the book of Titus chapter 3. I'm going to read just a few verses in Titus chapter 3 because tonight we're going to teach and walk through a few scriptures uh, under the heading Rehabilitation and Regeneration. If I can, I would also say when the same spirit returns. Rehabilitation and Regeneration. When the same spirit returns. Amen. And we're going to walk through a few verses of scripture. And I, 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 I'll, I'll share this with you because I share it with everybody because it works for me. I have to have a pen and a pad because you never know when God is going to say something that you need to jot down. Because God will say something. And I mean, it, sometimes it may, it, in the entire sermon, God might give us a seed. And we have to jot it down. Amen? Amen. Let, me, let me go ahead and read something, and then we're going to re read a number of verses of Scripture as we walk through this. But I need to make sure that I lay the foundation here. In the book of Titus chapter 3, I'm just going to read verses 4, uh, 3 through 6. Let me read 3 through 6. <clears throat> Titus chapter 3. I'll begin reading with verse number 3. For sake of time, I'll start with verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. Oh, and let me go ahead and caution you. If we get no amens, we stay longer. We read more. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can I, let me just read this again. For we ourselves, this is Titus. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. I didn't say that's what we're doing. It says we were. Amen. We're sometimes like that. It's okay to say amen because we're not like that anymore. Amen. I know everybody will say amen to that in the church. <laughs> but after, but after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. He saved us. According to his mercy, his mercy. We didn't ask for it. Nobody asked the Lord to save them because Jesus looked upon us and he saw our, he looked over our faults and saw our needs and all of us was too mean to live and not even fit to die. And while we were dead in sins, Jesus decided by his own sovereign will. Nobody said, Lord, save me. But Jesus said, because I'm loved and because I love my people, I'm going to die for them before anybody asks me to save them. That's the goodness of Jesus. He looked over the fault and saw what we all needed. And that's why he went to the cross. And he said, you can call on me and you can accept me after the fact. I'm going to bless you now and then you can come to me and accept what I did to you after the fact. Isn't it good to be a blessing to somebody when they don't ask? Amen. Amen. When you be like the Lord, just go ahead and do it because you know they have a need. Amen. You know, and then just say, well, if you bless me, bless me later on. You can thank me later on. You, I'm not going to walk away mad with you. You don't have to thank me because you didn't ask for it anyway. 
I did it because I love you. Did it because it was in my heart. Amen. All right. All right. Uh, because of his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And I'm going to focus a little bit. I mean, we could talk all day off of one word, off of one scripture. I mean, the, Lord, the Lord's word is awesome. But the latter part of verse number five there says that by the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And so since we're talking about rehabilitation and regeneration, I just want to talk about that. There is a blessing in those two things. To, to rehabilitation and regeneration. They're different, but they are both a blessing. Now, one may lead to the other because one is certainly much more, much more and more better, more prominent than the other. Amen? Amen. And we ought to be encouraged by it. And so to the blessing of how one works, because rehabilitation is what happens to some people. That's kind of what happens when people are restored. When people are restored, maybe to back to health, restored back to a normal life, the life that they previously had. But regeneration is something a little bit different. Regeneration is not just restoring. Regeneration is renewing. That's a bit different. Re restoration is that which is, uh, uh, re rehabilitation is that which is done that causes a change in someone. Causes their, their, their ways and behaviors and their attitudes and things about them to change. And, and, and a lot of times it involves the absence of the problem. The absence of the situation. The removal of the person from where the problem was. What was helping them get into their problem. But regeneration is what the Lord did for us. God did some things and he said, I, you don't need to be absent from the problem. Or change your behavior in ways. But I'm going to leave you in the problem. And then I'm going to give you power over the problem. Amen. I want you to follow me tonight. Amen. We're not just going to change because if we change our ways. We may not be able to change continually and forever. Because we got involved and did it. But that's, good. that's a good thing. That's why we have these different counseling sessions. And we have these different services. And I believe pastors provides a counseling service. But listen, the counseling service will help lead people to a greater place. We've got to get them started so they both are great. But I just want to make sure that we understand and identify the difference. Because there is a percentage, and I don't want to go into the percentages of how many come in and then they go out. You know, you got a certain percentage of them that remain and then some have to go back a second time to get rehabilitated. But when God gets involved, and God gets involved and he doesn't just cause your mind and attitude and ways and behaviors to change, but he changes and renews who you are. When you leave, you no longer are the same person. You didn't just stay long enough to change your body, your mind and your behavior, change your habits, but God changed who you were. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that we are new creatures. Old things are passed away and things have become new. We are new. We are a new creature. We don't just have new ways and behaviors, but we are a new creature. I'm different. I don't do things different only, but I'm different. I'm not the person I used to be. Let me read something. And, you know, I'm going to go, I might have to go backwards a little bit here because I had something uh, that I want to read. Since I've already said it, I'm going to read to you John chapter 17, verses 14 to 16. I need to do this because I, the scripture is extremely important. Amen. And it has to, it, it supports what we talk about. That's right. John 17, 14 to 16 says this. Jesus said, I have given them thy word, 
and the world had hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I Listen to this now, verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. This is Jesus. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. That's what the Lord said. Don't take them out. Give them power. Yeah. They are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. So I had to read that right quick. And so the Lord said, I am going to send you as sheep among wolves. I am not going to remove you because I need you there. The people there need to be saved. The people there need an example. He said, I myself came here. And so I'm, a, I'm not trying to leave. I'm trying to go in the fire. Because I want somebody to be able to see the fire. Now, there are those who, who do not have the power. They do not have the authority. They do not have what it takes. The willpower, if you don't mind me saying that, to be able to stand. They have a problem, they have an issue, they have a situation, and so they cannot overcome it. The truth of the matter is, we cannot overcome our problems alone. We can't do it. Can't do it. We need some help. We need to grab somebody's hand. If you don't have the Lord, go find a counselor. Maybe a counselor will help you. But when you do that, Make sure that you not only just change your ways, but ask God, God help me Amen. to not just change my ways and change my behavior because I am a man. I can change my behavior. I can wake up in the morning and put on a door face. I can wake up in the morning and act a certain way. I have the power to do that. But I do not have the power to continue to do that because that's not who I am. That's good. Amen. Who I am is going to come out. Amen. Period. Amen. I can look like anything else for a short time. But guess what? The door face is going to come off. The dress up is going to come off. Talk long enough, the real me is going to come out. I am who I am. That's why the Lord said, I am that I am. I'm not going to change. I'm the same yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Amen. Come on. That's what Hebrews says now. I didn't say that. That's right. That's right. I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But, my friends, I, too, am an individual. And, 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 you know, I'm the same person. But God wants to make me somebody else. I want to be able to wake up in the morning and I no longer have this fallen nature, but I have a divine nature, which is what, which is what Peter said. God has given us a divine Amen. nature. And we have a divine nature when we are born again. Amen. Born again. And so when we have a divine nature, we wake up in the morning thinking about the Lord. Our mind is no longer like it used to be. We are a new person. We are a new creature. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's something different about me because I act different. I talk different. I walk different. There's a newness of life. You, you, you all have gotten saved. You all are born again. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Anybody in here not born again, we'll stop service right now. Make sure everybody gets born again. And you know, then we can leave. <laughs> the Lord is going to come one day, maybe during somebody's service. And they're going to be waiting till the end of the service to get prayed for. Usually when I get up, I always say, let's find out if everybody in here is saved. Because if somebody's not saved, I do not want to be preaching. And I leave, and then you're not saved. So let's everybody make sure everybody's saved. Then we can have a good time. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. This thing gets good to me, and I get excited. Amen. I, I get excited when I talk about Jesus. It's something about the Lord that makes things different. And we don't have to schedule it. We don't have to plan it. If you have to put Jesus on your calendar, you might not be saved. Now, I don't mean, you know, you know what I'm saying. I'm not saying, you know, we, we get things in order. We know there's an order to things. But if you have to put Jesus on your calendar to, to remember him, 
you're probably not saved. Probably not saved. Because I don't, when you wake up, you should have Jesus in your mind. You know, when things happen, you should have Jesus on your mind. And Jesus should be in your thoughts and everything should filter through the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Saints of God, I love the Lord so much. Let me talk just to you just a little bit because, you know, we got to try to get through all of these two weeks of sermons here in just about another 20 or 30 minutes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want, see, Satan is, 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 is interested in destroying us. He wants to steal. What else? Kill and destroy. Amen. Now, yeah, yeah, the church have to help me preach. That's called elliptical preaching. So, the church, we know that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And by the way, he's not dead. Don't let anybody tell you he's not, he's dead. Satan is not dead. We are dead to sin. We are dead to sin. Satan is not dead. He will come, he seeks to destroy, he wants to, wants to bring us down. He is relentless and he's not going to stop his attacks. So we must be ready, we must stay ready, and we must watch and pray. Because that's his job. That is his job. And so that's why Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us because he knows if he leave us for one second. Come on now. <laughs> sin lies at the door. That's right. If the Lord leaves us for one second. Amen. And so let me read something else. Um, we, we, we're down to, not to two weeks, we've got ten days left. Okay, the tempter. <laughs> Let's talk about the tempter. He tries men. And he seeks to destroy us. And if he loses, he's not going to leave you alone very long. Let me read for you St. Luke chapter 4. St. Luke chapter 4. Verses, I'm just going to read verses 1 and 2 and verse 13. Uh, for the sake of time, I, and I'll share with you what's in between. Verse 1. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, being full of the Holy Ghost, being full of the Holy Ghost, all right. Okay. We'll stay longer. We don't get amen. <laughs> Returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, when those days were ended, he afterward hungered. Now, there's a lot in between here, but verse 13 says this of St. Luke chapter 4. And when the devil had ended all the temptation... He departed him for a season. That's Luke 4.13. Now in between there, verse number 3 through 12, I think some of you know the story. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Satan tempted him, didn't he? Yeah. Some things happened. And Satan did a number of things, kind of like what happened with Eve in the garden. Amen. Eve and Adam in the garden. You, you remember that? Amen. Uh, they had to be tempted. In order to be proven, to be tested, to be tried. And so I want to just share with you that Eve made it easy in the garden. She didn't put up a big fight. Satan mentioned to her some things that he said God didn't say this and God didn't mean that. And I, we don't have in the recordings where she put up a fight and an argument. She just kind of laid down. We, we, listen, most of us would put up a little bit of a fight. Mm -hmm. And so you have to explain that to me now because I know what God said. Mm -hmm. Come on, she didn't need an explanation. She just thought, she just looked at it and saw that it looked good. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful. Mm -hmm. And so we must not allow ourselves to lay down mm -hmm. when we know the word of God. We should speak the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so here's something that happened here. And so just like Adam and Eve, when God had said to them, you shall not eat. Amen? Amen? They decided to go ahead and eat. But the spirit in the garden was very similar to what happened to Jesus, the second man, Adam. Amen. The second Adam. Amen. The first Adam, God, God created him and he was innocent, but he still needed to be tested. So God put him in the garden, Amen. told him what he could not eat. Amen. But what did he do? Went right out there and eat. 
But now here we come with the second man, Adam, Jesus. Very similar situation. And so before Jesus could set out on his ministry, God, through the Spirit, led him to the wilderness. And what, what did Satan do? Very same thing that he did to Adam in the garden. Started talking about what he should eat. The very first thing Satan said to him was, if you be God, turn this stone into bread. We're talking about Eve. I want you to see that now because there is a very clear connection with Satan trying to bring down all of the all of the universe with asking Adam and Eve to eat. And they ate. They failed. Amen. And so here's Jesus now, the second Adam coming. Satan tried the same thing. I want you to eat. I want you to take what I'm offering you. Don't if you want to know what the tree was. Oh, I don't have time to talk about that too much in, in detail. We're not just talking about trees now. This was the type of tree that was offered to Jesus. It's about eating and partaking of something that's going to destroy your spirit. It's not about an apple. It's not about a fig. It's about disobedience to what God said. We should only eat what God has said that we should eat. We should partake of his word. We should hunger and thirst after his word. And when God tells us not to eat from the tree of, you know the story, good and evil. That was good and evil right there. And when we decide to only eat from the tree of life, well, what's the tree of life? The tree of life is God. It is his word. If you eat his word, you shall live. Thank you, Lord. You shall live. And so we know the story and what happened there. How that, you know, uh, Satan offered him some other things. He took him to a high mountain and he told them, I'll give you the world. Mm. After that, he took him on a pinnacle and said, cast yourself down. Mm. Each time, Jesus answered with the word. Amen. Can you only imagine what would have happened if Eve had answered with the word? Mm. Wow. Thank you. Let me just pause for a moment to tell you that you and I That's right. are being challenged yes. to eat yes. what the enemy has to say. Right. Come on now. Come on. And when we decide to only eat what God has said, you see, here's the, here's the problem. If we don't know the word of God, if we do not read the word of God, we will not be able to go back and say, it is written. You're wrong. This is what God said. This is what God told me to do. This is the only thing I'm going to take inside of me. Because if I eat and accept anything else. Come on. Thank you, Lord. My goodness. And so Jesus overcame mm. verses 3 through 12. And then in verse 13, after Satan realized he was defeated, the Bible said he left for how long? Why did he only leave for a season? <laughs> Don't you think for one moment that when Satan gets done with you and you cast him down and you cast him out and you tell him no, He's going to leave you alone. No, 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 no. No, he's going to leave you, but only for a season. Well, how long is that season, Pastor? When's he coming back? Sometimes that season lasts as long as you're in church and by the time you get to your car. Oh, I'm going through it again. You come back to church, it's back again. You've got to whip him good. Amen. Don't give him one scripture. Don't just give him two. Give him the whole Bible. Amen. Let him know you know the whole thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Because he's coming back. Yes, he's coming back. You can bank on that. But Jesus stood his ground. And so because of that, we have the scripture over in Corinthians that says, because by the first Adam, sin came into the world, passed upon all mankind. 
But a second Adam showed up, came to the garden, and because of the second man, Adam, we now have a unblemished, unspotted, come on somebody, lamb that was able to die for you and I so that the whole world can all of a sudden be changed from what happened on this side. And so now we have this opportunity to say, God, I thank you. Amen. Being born again. Amen. Amen. Being born again. But we, you know, we started by saying rehabilitation and regeneration when the same spirit returns. There, there's something happening because the same spirit is going to return. There's something in Matthew chapter 12. Got eight more days. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. Anybody ever read that? Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish it then. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Verse 44, then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out and whence he is come. He findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. He says, I'm coming back. Oh, he coming for a season, right? Verse, uh, verse 45 says, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it also be with this wicked generation. That, that's the Lord. That's Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. When a person whips the enemy, tell Jesus they want to be saved. They want to be clean. They want to be righteous. I want to not do the things that I used to do. Y'all have read Romans before. In Romans chapter 7, that comes to mind. Paul said, the things that I would do, the things that I want to do, I don't do them. And the things that I don't want to do, those are the things that I do. So then it is no more, <laughs> what's wrong with me? I don't want to do this, but I'm doing it. Why? Because of fallen nature. Because of lack of power. Because of lack of authority. Because of the system of men. The system of this world. We do things. When we do not have the power of God in our life, we do things we don't want to do. People go out and they kill. They shoot up They shoot up neighborhoods. They shot up what, what Las Vegas not long ago. They went to movie theaters and shot up. And we're wondering why. If that person had the power of God, let me just go on record to say a person with the power of God operating in their life, they would never. They would never do it. The enemy is going to come back. People who are born, we're seeing this Me Too generation. We're seeing, you, you all know Me Too, they're talking about that now? Sexual harassment. All, and, and then people who said they were molested. All of a sudden, you get people 40 and 50. Oh, I was molested too when I was 10. And I'm 50. And guess what? The spirit will not leave. That's what I'm trying to get at now. The spirit will not leave. That same spirit. Why is the spirit still existing? It's because it was never buried. It was never crucified. It was never given to Jesus. And then we didn't continue to walk in the ways of the Lord. Glory to God. And then the judge brings people up and they say, well, they were crazy. They were out of their mind. And, you know, they plead. You know how they plead to get off. Insanity. That's what they call it, right? I didn't have no sense. You're right you didn't have it. You had five, but none of them were operating. You did have some sense. They just don't operate. And so, well, we're going to, we're going to sentence you to the halfway house and to a place where you can be rehabilitated. Okay, I'm getting somewhere now. Six more days left. We're going to rehabilitate these people. 
If you rehabilitate somebody, you remove them from society. You lock them away. You put them behind a cage. You teach them and train them and have them listen only to good things. Listen, get, let me tell you what's going to happen. When we move, remove somebody and we rehabilitate them, if we are not careful, then after a period of time, and I don't know what it is, I don't know how to even come up with it. Well, well for this, we're going to keep you six months. And now we know that you have overcame this for 12 months, you can go back now. I'm not trying to say that I know it because I don't. But what I do know is they go into rehabilitation and after a certain period of time, after a certain period of time, they go back into society. Not everybody, but you know what I'm saying. But here's the problem with that. They go back into the same society where they were that caused the problem to start with. You've been here for 12 weeks. You've been here for 12 months. You've done good. You didn't smoke any dope. You didn't get any crack. You didn't. Okay, we kept. Why? Because you were absent from it. Mm, right, Jesus. And so now you have, you have cleaned yourself out. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Clean yourself out. Satan left, if you don't mind me saying. Come back. He's not gone forever. Came back. How swell. Empty, garnished, in rehabilitation. This is what's so beautiful about people who counsel, who are saved and covered by the blood of Jesus. Because it's not just that we're going to open the counseling book. But it's something about the Holy Ghost living inside of the person that they're going to share it because I don't want you to go back empty. I don't want you to go back clean. I don't want you to go back. Where the shall a young man cleanse himself from his way? Not because of rehabilitation, but by the word of God. We are washed. Titus chapter 3 says that we are washed and we are clean by the regeneration of the power of God's word. If you just take me away and put me away and tell me to do better, I'm not better just because I simply confess I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. I'm going to be better. I feel better. Yes, you feel better. You're in here. And then we let you go. Back to the same. Are you all following? Yes. Back to the same place. That got you there. I know, and we might say, well, don't go there. Go to another community. Go somewhere else. Listen, the devil is everywhere. Amen. Well, you know, he's, he's going to and fro. Amen. But here is the beauty. If we want 100% recovery, I don't need to spend much time on this one with you. We need to make sure that we tell the people who are being rehabilitated. Once we know that John chapter 3 verses 1 through 11 have gotten deep down on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 10 has taken over your life. Mm -hmm. You know those verses. Mm -hmm. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Once we know that you oh, yeah. did not just change your ways. You did not just change your behavior. You're not just talking, but you're walking. You're not just saying this thing, but something has gotten a hold of you, and you're no longer. I don't want you to leave, and we're, and we're not able to say old things of past away. When I, don't want to, I don't want you to leave and we just say old things you don't do anymore. No, 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 no. I want you to say, I want to say old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. Now, don't get me wrong. Rehabilitation is something that will start a, start a person on the pathway to regeneration. Yes. Sometimes they'll never get on the pathway. We need a process. And so rehabilitation, if you don't mind me saying, this is not just a world profession. Rehabilitation 
is what we're doing in the church. That's where people get rehabilitated. People come to church walking and talking in a way that they shouldn't. Dealing in all kinds of issues and situations that they shouldn't be. We don't need a home for them. We need a church for them. We need an anointing word for them. We need them to come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. That's what I'm trying to say here. Because, you know, rehabilitation centers, some of them, they, they got churches in the, at the center. Because they have come to understand that, wait a minute, we need something more than an outline. My outline is working 20%, 20 25% of the time. I send them back and then I'll see John coming again in two years. We need to get John saved. John needs to take, take Jesus along with him. And when you, when, you, when you send him out the door and the Lord goes along with him, you and John are going to be brothers and sisters. You don't have to worry about John because John's going to run. He's going to start running a rehabilitation center somewhere. John's going to start telling everybody. When he gets saved, what he's going to be telling them is his testimony. I used to be, you heard what we read in Titus when we first started reading, I used to be a deceiver. I used to be. Oh yes. We're talking about what we used to be, not what we are. Because we've been changed. The old things are passed away and then they'll be asking questions, is this the same man? You know how they ask about something. Is this the same? Is that the same man? That can't be. He's dressed and he's clothed and he's in his right mind. You all know the scriptures I'm talking about here. He's in his right mind. Something got a hold of him. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Something got a hold of him. That was Matthew. Mm. When you defeat Satan, it's temporary. If you're still living. If you're still living. I say it's temporary because he wants a rematch. Don't think for one moment that your number one challenger is not going to ask for a rematch. He's coming back. He left Jesus for a season. But here's the thing about it. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. He's cunning. He's tricky. And he's not going to try and meet you in the ring. Amen. And he's not going to let you schedule the rematch. I'll fight you at this place at this time on my circumstance. Satan is not. He's going to sit back. He's going to wait for an opportunity, a time frame. When you find yourself at your weakest hour, kind of like a lion that seeks a weak prey, he's not going to let you get ready, let you fast and pray. He knows he doesn't have a chance. He's going to catch you when you're getting mad, when you're not thinking about the Lord. And he's going to try to sneak up on you. Oh, but now here is the beauty of it. When you know your enemy, you know how to prepare. How many of you know you got enemies? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. If nobody say amen, I'm going to ask that again. <laughs> amen. amen. Four more days. <laughs> you have enemies. I have enemies. Until everybody gets saved, we're going to have them. Amen. And so the enemy is never going to try to fight somebody that he cannot whip. Face to face. Doesn't happen like that. He's going to try to trip you up. Trap you up. Catch you at a time when you're not expecting. And that's why I thank you. God, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. We walk in and we're talking. We are on our job and we're just going about our day. Don't tell me you're always under the power of God. Come on, somebody say amen. You're not always under the power of God. You're walking on your job. You're going to lunch. You're doing everything except reading the Bible. You know the Bible and you love God, but you're not thinking about it right now. But guess what? The Lord is walking right there with you. Why are you not thinking about being saved? By the way, I don't think about being saved 24 hours a day. I don't think about it. 
I got somebody else that thinks for me, so there's no reason for me to think about it. I go to bed at night. I don't sit up praying all night long. Why should I do that? Jesus is going to be up all night anyway. I don't have to worry about these things. The Lord said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I know you're in the world. I know you live in the world. I know you have things going on other than just the Holy Ghost being in your mind and you're praying all the time. And so in that period of time, I'm going to cover you. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. My goodness, hallelujah to Jesus. Mm. As long as we're in the world and we have defeated Satan, and thank God everybody in the church have defeated him. But he's still living and he's still coming back. And here, let me tell you this, two days, we're almost done. When Satan comes back, he's coming back to try and catch you at something that you're familiar with. Well, what, what are you talking about, Pastor? What I'm talking about is, let me use myself for an example. I've never used drugs, never smoked drugs. Never, I don't, and if you show me a drug, I don't, probably don't know what, it's a, what, it, what it is. You'd have to tell me. And so I say that to say this. Satan is, is most likely not going to send somebody when I stop at the mall to come up to me and try to offer me a bag of whatever they're trying to sell. That's right. That's right. They're not going to come up and offer me. I don't even need the Lord for that. Are you kidding me? I'm going to do that. I've never done that. I don't want to do that. That's not in my DNA. It's not even in my DNA. And listen, I don't even, listen, I'm not even going to call on the Lord. Get away from me. I don't need to pray. You follow what I'm saying. If you came to the Lord, and we all have, all of us had some kind of issue. All of us had some kind of issue. Amen. Okay. We all had some kind of issue. Large, small, whatever you want to call it. And, and, but we came and we gave it to the Lord. We gave it to the Lord. And when we gave it to the Lord, we overcame it. God said, you know what? I am going to give you power over that. And now, follow me now. We already read it in St. John. I'm not going to take that from you. You're still going to have that in your neighborhood. You're still going to have that on your job. You're still going to have the problems around you, but they are not going to affect you. They're not going to be in you the way that they are. I'm going to change how you see them. I'm going to change your inside. Because when I change your inside, you will not see the outside the same way anymore. The Lord will give you a new eyesight, a new thought, a new way to process everything and all of the hell and all of the evil that's going on. You're not going to cast evil out of the world. Evil is in the world. But God's going to give you peace that passes understanding. Right in the midst of the confusion, God said, I'm going to leave you right there. But the next time you go, you're not going to even know it's confusion. Because the Holy Ghost down on the inside of you will have changed you. You Listen, we don't need to change situations, change issues, and change matters. We need to be changed. Amen. You, you, we read it. Amen. Father, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should... Keep them from the evil. Give them power. Put a hedge about them. Let them live in the midst of it. But oh my goodness. But put a hedge about them. When you talk about a hedge, you can go to Job chapter 1 on your own time sometime. Job, Job, Job just standing there, just living inside of that hedge. Come on, somebody. And the devil said, I want to get to it, but you, you got a hedge about it. I want to get to it, but you got a hedge about it. I don't know about you, but I live in the hedge. I live in the hedge. I'm hedged about. Satan telling the Lord, I'm going to get to him, but you got a hedge about him. God said, I know I got a hedge about him. He's right in the midst of all of the mess with everybody else, but he's got a thousand shelf all over here, ten thousand shelf all over here, but you know what I'm saying. This is why God said that. It's darkness over here, but light over here. 
Frogs over there, but not over here. Oh yes, oh, we're talking about across the street. Raining over there, but dry over here. God said, go to Goshen. I dare you to go to Goshen. When people tell, talk to me, I said, I'm moving to Goshen. It's, where's Goshen? Goshen is that place when you're standing right over here, there's hell right over there. Now, hold on, let me run back here. I'm, I'm trying to go, okay, for those that are looking, I'm going to Goshen. Goshen is when there is gnats and flies and all hell right here, but you're standing right there. Nothing shall come nigh. Isn't God good? We are going to live in this world until Jesus take us out. He didn't tell us to leave the world. He said, leave them in the world. As a matter of fact, I'm sending them as sheep among wolves. And, and, and the wolves know that you are there. And they still cannot touch you. A sheep in the field that a wolf see and he still cannot touch, but he wants to touch, but he's looking and he's afraid to try to touch you because he's seen a shepherd. <laughs> Wolves are not that crazy. They're smart. They are very smart. Jesus is watching. And he tells us to watch and pray. But you know what he said? He didn't, he didn't go out of his way to put in the scripture. I'm going to be watching for you so y'all really don't have to watch. But he is watching. Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. But he tells us to watch. And when we watch, we say, Jesus! Amen. And as soon as, that, as soon as that wolf hear you call Jesus, Amen. you know the story. Amen. One more day. Just about done. And I know we got to go. I just want to transition here, share this with you so that we can so that we can go home. Let's just take a quick moment to talk about what it means to have power over. Because we've already kind of touched on it, but we have power over. We read St. John chapter, chapter 17. Lord, you have given us power over our situation. You know, I, I would to God that you would, I wouldn't have to drink this cup. I would to God that you would just remove this, this cup and all of these problems from me. But God, if you don't, there's a key word in the scripture that sometimes we need to learn. It's only in there a couple, two or three times. And that word is nevertheless. That's what Jesus prayed in Matthew chapter 26. He said, nevertheless, thy will be done. Nevertheless means whatever you say. However you want to say, I don't see this, but whatever you say. I will be done. Yes. Peter said it again out there, out there in the ship. You know, Luke, St. Luke chapter 5. They had just finished, finished casting their nets out, didn't catch anything. Jesus came along, and then Jesus said, Hey, what, what are y'all doing? Oh, we just we just cleaned our nets. Well, well, long time to the deep. Well, Lord, we've already done that. We've been out there all night. No, you didn't hear what I said. I said, launch out into the deep and cast your nets out. But we've been there. And then Peter said, nevertheless, whatever you say, I don't see it. I don't believe it. I'm a fisherman. I'm a professional. I know more than you know. And so I'm just going to do it just because you said it. I want everybody to know that I'm going on record to do this because you said it because I don't believe you're going to catch anything. But just because you said it, that's what nevertheless means. I'm getting out of myself and getting into you, God, just because you said it. Amen. I don't see it, but I just believe it right now just because you said it. So that's what I'm doing. You, maybe you know more than I know. And you know the story from there. Amen. You don't have to see it. We don't have to know it. Listen, whatever used to work, God doesn't work with what used to work. Amen. As a matter of fact, if it used to work, God would never tell you to do it. Because he wants to get the glory. He wants to make sure that you do something that never had worked. Because if we go and do it, here we are boasting ourselves. Look at what I did. Just about done. Half a day left. Amen. Rehabilitation. Just want to close because we want to make sure we want to close with that. Rehabilitation involves more counsel and external help. And the absence of being away from the issue to help people become restored. 
to help them be in an environment that would help them get some help from other people who are also trying to be helped. And from some people that are trying to lead them in a better path. Not everyone is, who's a counselor is filled with God's spirit, but they're doing a good thing. But those that are filled with God's spirit understand that when we get to the end of the council and the end of all of the outlines, we, we write Jesus. Somehow or another, I've got to get Jesus across to them. Because I do not want to just have them go through a 12-week, 6-month, 12-month rehabilitation period and I send them right back into their state, into their city, into their community because that's how they got into problem to start with. And when I send them back, I need to send them back with some power. Not a certificate that said they completed the class. And so that's rehabilitation. It's restoring. But regeneration involves more of the spiritual and the internal. It is that which is, which is a seed. Regeneration means there is a seed. It means there is a seed that, that has been planted. Amen? Praise the Lord. And I know we plant other seeds in people, but we're talking about the incorruptible seed. There is a corruptible seed and there's an incorruptible seed. We planted an incorruptible seed inside of them. And when they began to hear the word of God and when they began to read their Bible, and I think, I don't know, Pastor Noah could probably tell me, maybe they'd send them away with the Bible because they need a Bible. And so if they read it, if they get the seed inside of them and then they read it and they water that seed, they will, they will begin to produce good fruit. Amen? So to, to have truly overcome and to have power over something, one must have not just cast off and cast out, but they must have received on the inside so that when they go back after rehabilitation into that same environment, that environment has no power over them. They have a hedge about them and that will be... Mm. I can't help but get excited about it. I'm sorry about it. But you, we send them right back into that environment. And then we, we, we send them with a hedge about them. And they've got a hedge. And all of a sudden, the same person that came that tried to bring them down before and offer them, just let me use it. If they try to offer them drugs, it's, I, I don't do that anymore. Because Satan is going to try to get you to eat. He's going to try to get you to partake. He's going to try to get you to go back. Whatever, when a person goes, goes and gets rehabilitated and they go back, if they were rehabilitated from drugs, that it is not likely that they're coming back to the rehabilitation center now because of something else. They're coming back probably because of the same thing that they did before. That's right. Amen? Amen. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I read this. Did, amen. I don't think I read 2 Peter chapter 2, did I? No. I'm going to read this, and that's, and that's the last verse I'll read you. And I, because I wanted you to make sure that you hear this, because you, this is why they're going to come back the second time. And this is why, it's, you know, Satan comes back and they're going to have a big problem. And then they're going to have a bigger problem. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 20, through 20 to 22. Let me just pick up from this, these natural brute beasts and these bad people. The scripture says, uh, 2 Peter 2, 20 to 22. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse than the beginning. Verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Better for somebody to not have known? This is the scripture. For it would have been better for that person if they had not known the way of righteousness, then after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Hmm. Verse 22. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Trying to get you to see this as we close. If after someone have walked out of their trouble, walked out of their pain, come to the knowledge of God, and then they turn from what they had, because Satan will come again. He will come again. There is a season and he's coming again. He doesn't care that you accepted the Lord. 
He's coming again. The battle that you won and I won is temporary. As long as we're living. He's coming again. We've got to beat him again. He's going to meet us again somewhere. But try to meet us on his territory. You're not going to come try to change you in church. Not likely. But the scripture says, it was better for that person, 2 Peter 2.21, to basically have not known. And, we, and, it, and, and remember when we read Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45? Because when the enemy goes away, looks and comes back, and finds the house clean, swept, garnished, he's not coming back alone. He's going to bring some folks with him. Scripture says he's bringing seven more. Yep. Worse than himself. Couldn't beat you the first time. Coming back to seven more. You ever had a little, little fight with somebody in, in school? You ever had a little fight with somebody when you were in school? Wait a minute. But wait a minute. I, maybe I've gone down the wrong road here. Nobody in this church had a fight in school. You know, slip your hand up. Don't let nobody else see you. But slip your hand up like this. If you've ever had a fight. Okay, we do. Amen. Praise. Look at it, Pastor. Now, okay, I can reduce it. A fight is not when you throw your fist and you kick. It, it can be. It can be talking too. Yes, so yes. Now, okay, everybody. We've had a little fight with somebody, and if you had a really bad one and you won, I mean, hopefully you won, and you won. Guess what? When they come back, and they're coming back, they're bringing some help. Going home to get my sister. I'm going to get my brother. I'm, I'll be back. And if I can't find anybody, I'm going to give me a knife or a gun. I'm coming back with something more powerful. i got to somehow defeat you. I am not going to fight you straight up. You just whipped me. Why would I do that? And so they're going to come back again. It's important for us to know that we need to close the deal. Close the deal. And call it done. And the beauty of it is make sure that you have your bodyguard. Because if you have your bodyguard, they're going to run even with their numbers. Because one shall chase. Okay. And we are more if God is with us. Amen. So it does not matter. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're down to the last 30 seconds. <laughs> we have had two weeks of messages. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yeah. Pastor said you're all going to have an extra week because they have some something coming up. So we had to give you two weeks of messages. Amen. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Pray that the Lord have blessed you and something has been said to be a blessing to yourself. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you.